David Wood and Ridwan the Aposte tried to respond to my video Ex-Muslim debunking Islam in one minute backfired. In my video I reacted to a video from Ridwan titled Islam is peaceful debunked in one minute. So this video is going to be a reaction to a reaction of a reaction. And subhanallah their video exposed their ignorance about Islam and their own beliefs. And uh, is Ridwan a Christian or an atheist? Because he defended Christianity more than David Wood. Their video lasted more than three hours. Hours. So it's impossible for me to address all their points, but I respond to some of their statements to prove how weak their arguments are. So without wasting any time, let's watch the clips and come back. It speaks about those disbelievers who broke the treaty and their pledge. No, it According does not. According to Tafsir Saadi, those disbelievers combine these three qualities. Disbelief, lack of faith and betrayal. Again, nothing about this verse is against peace. Allah I don't even know much about this Tafsir. What is this? Why did I never come across? Why do I never come across this? Yeah, I'm not familiar with this as either. Tafsir. Uh, they don't even know what Tafsir is said it is. Alhamdulillah, they expose their ignorance about Islam live to the people to see. For them to not know what Tafsir said it is, is like me not knowing what is the King James Version of the Bible is. And this clip alone is enough for anybody listening to them to know that they are not qualified to speak about Islam. I would like to thank David Wood and Ridvan for this amazing clip and showing their ignorance of the Islamic sources to everyone. I've, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I heard of it, but I've, well, I'm never, sure, I'm, I've never heard anybody use this. Or yeah, I've I'm a, yeah ever... I've never seen anyone cite this, at least that I recall. Um, he's, he's, he's mentioning it like it's a very commonly known thing. I've like throughout my Muslim life or my non-Muslim ex-Muslim life, I never have heard anyone reference this, which is very interesting. You never heard anybody reference this tafsir because you are not listening to scholars. And your information about Islam is from Sheikh Google and repeating Sam Shamon type arguments. Even Sneeko, a new Muslim, knows about tafsir Sadi. And you who claim to have more than 20 years of experience studying Islam don't. This is heavy. Yes, it is. Oh. This is... Uh... There's a very famous scholar, Sheikh Abdurrahman Nasir al Saadi. He was the teacher of Sheikh Ibn Al-Thaymeen. He wrote a very simple to understand tafsir. And now it's been translated into English. Very hard to find for a long time. I couldn't find it in English. Alhamdulillah, I found it. I bought it. And this is a gift to you. Free. <laughs> MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. This <laughs> heavy book. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a very good tafsir. tafsir when you said you are going to give me a book, I didn't think you were going to give me... Ten, yeah, <laughs> okay. and this is a very light reading. So is so, it? Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah. not. It's very. <laughs> this is this is light reading for me. So, uh, alhamdulillah, this is a very simple tafsir. You can read it. You don't this is to simple. It. Wallahi, it's embarrassing. You may not think it is, but according to us Muslims. It is. And Sheikh Ibn Utaymin rahimahullah called it one of the best books of tafsir. And you have two non-Muslims pretending to know Islam, claiming they never heard of it. By the way, I looked up uh, Al Saadi on Surah 98, verse 6, uh, as far as uh, it is they who are the worst of people. He says, because they learned about the truth, but they ignored it. So they became losers in this world and the hereafter. Wow. Nothing about, nothing about betraying people or anything else. So wow. You heard the truth, you you ignored it, and so you're the worst of creatures. Wow. Wow. That's his commentary that he said go to. <laughs> this is fantastic, man. So he opened a book he had never heard of and tried to refute me. Subhanallah. First of all, you just lied and tried to deceive the people. Let's head to which verse from the Quran I explained using Tafsir Saadi. Speaks about those disbelievers who broke the treaty and their pledge. No, it According does not. According to Tafsir Saadi, those disbelievers combine these three qualities. Disbelief, lack of faith, and betrayal. Again, nothing about this verse is against peace. As you can see, I gave an explanation for chapter 8 verse 56 and not chapter 98 verse 6 like David Wood did.
By the way, I looked up uh, Al Saudi on Surah 98, verse 6. Surah 98, verse 6. Surah 98, verse 6. Nothing about this verse is against peace. Why is David so dishonest that he didn't quote the same verse I did? And why did I explain this verse to begin with? Well, because Ridvan the apostate quoted it in his original video. Number three, the Quran refers in many parts, including in chapter 8, verse 55, to non Muslims as the worst of creatures. What has this verse to do with being peaceful or not? And why did David Wood use another verse? Well, because he knows I'm right and I explained it correctly. This is Tafsir Sadi, and this is the explanation of verse 56 of chapter 8. Verily, the worst of creatures before Allah are those who disbelieve and will not believe. They are the ones with whom you made a treaty, but they break their treaty every time, and they do not fear Allah. Those who combine these three characteristics, disbelief, lack of faith, and treachery, in the sense that they do not adhere to their treaty or keep their word, are the worst of creatures before Allah. So my explanation is correct. It does say that the worst of creatures are those disbelievers who break their treaty every time. So I am correct and David Wood is wrong. Wow. Nothing about, nothing about betraying people or anything else. So wow. You, you heard the truth, you, you ignored it, and so you're the worst of creatures. Wow. 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 No, it does say they broke the treaty. And it is you who never heard of Tafsir Sadi and got caught like in life. And now you are just trying to save face. Alhamdulillah, I showed how he tried to deceive people by using another verse. And ignored the verse that was mentioned by Ridvan and I refuted him on it. And now let's move on to the Crusades, which somehow only existed to stop the Muslims according to them. What does he bring up? He brings up the Crusades. Which, <laughs> which were a response. No, you could point to wars in Christianity, but the Crusade, if you're pointing to the Crusades, that's a response. Yeah. it's a, You can even see on the map here, uh, but Muslims were coming uh, along the east, along the west. He claimed that the Crusades were a response to the Muslims. Really? Well, let's look up what happened in the first Crusade. I invite you to read in the year 1096, the first Crusade and the Jews by Robert Chazan, who is the leading historian of the Jewish Middle Ages. And he said in his book, Although Count Amico's crusaders and their burger allies clearly intended to eradicate the Jews of Mainz and other locals, Jews also were presented with an alternative conversion. In traditional ecclesiastical thinking, a Jew who accepted Christianity took a new being, which no longer invoked the animus that inspired the attacking crusaders. This is what happens during the first crusade to claim it was only a response to muslims is a lie albigensen crusade crusade called by pope innocent iii against the qatari a dualist religious movement in the southern france that the roman catholic church had branded heretical this is just an example of crusades against christian heretics this is how we show your dishonesty to the people claiming crusades are this cute response to muslims is a lie and a clear-cut deception I always say, according to atheism, there is no difference between this and this. You believe it is just rearrangement of molecules. <laughs> Number five, Islam. <laughs> what does that have to do with the topic at all here? <laughs> He's showing that Islam <laughs> is uh, peaceful. <laughs> Christians, please tell me, from where do you get your morality from? How can David Wood, who is supposed to be a Christian and a believer in God, not agree with me? We get our morality from God Almighty. Atheists have no legs to stand on when it comes to morality. What is a Christian trying to disagree with? That's stupid. You're stupid. Stop being stupid. This is why Christianity is a dying religion. You guys allow an atheist to promote his atheism to your people. And somehow you guys are in agreement morally. According to betterhelp.com, objective morality is to believe that morality is universal and not up for interpretation, suggesting that objective morality exists independently of individual perspectives. The moment a Christian agrees with me that morality is objective, he can never be a liberal. He can never believe that people are free to do whatever they want. But David Wood and Christians like him are just liberals pretending to be Christians. He doesn't believe that morality is objective because if he does, then all the commands in the Old Testament that he finds to be problematic should be considered moral and from God Almighty. But he doesn't. There are tons of things in the Bible 
Bibles that really, really bother me. And the difference is I think that Christianity can actually deal with these problems. I don't think that Islam can. And, and I, I think people have seen that tonight because you've had an opportunity to answer and you keep pointing the finger at Christianity. As far as Jesus being the God of the Old Testament, um, here's, here's, here's the data we have. One, lots of really bad things in the Old Testament. One, lots of really bad things in the Old Testament. If you believe something is bad in the Old Testament, then you as a Trinitarian Christian believe that Jesus revealed bad things in the Old Testament, since you believe Jesus is the God of the Old Testament. What David Wood and Red Van did trying to respond to my video was just laugh and misrepresent my points. Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes, from being righteous towards them and acting justly toward them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. Even if you go with this verse and assume that it's never been abrogated and that it still applies, Allah doesn't forbid you. Allah doesn't say it's haram for you to be righteous towards somebody and to act justly towards towards an unbeliever. Is that a command to not subjugate them? No, he's saying if you don't want to, you don't have to. It's not haram if you don't subjugate them. Yeah. Right? This verse is not abrogated like David Wood claimed. And alhamdulillah, the majority of Muslim scholars agree with me, not David Wood and his atheist friend. According to Tafsir Saadi, this verse means that Allah does not forbid you to show kindness, uphold ties, and to be fair and just towards the polytheists among your relatives and others, if they are not involved in waging war against you or driving you out of your homes. So there is no blame on you if you uphold ties with them because there are no reservation about upholding ties with them in this case and doing so will not lead to bad consequences. This is how we refute the ignorance and the lies of the haters of Islam. Subhanallah they are wasting their entire life to try and debunk Islam but they continuously fail. This is how we refute our religion. Christians believe in the Trinity, the belief that God is three persons in one being. So they believe that Jesus is God and the father is God and yet there is only one God. Let's put this concept to this logical test. My name is Safe and I am also known as Safe Talk in this channel which means that Safe is Safe Talk. In the same way you believe Jesus is God, the father is God which leads to believing that Jesus is the father and this is one of the absurdities of the doctrine of the Trinity. Alhamdulillah for the blessing of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected us from such nonsense and polity Say he is Allah who is one, Allah the eternal refuge. He neither begets nor is born nor is there to him any equivalent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the Christians back to true monotheism and to revert back to Islam, the religion of Jesus alayhi salam and all the prophets of God. I hope you benefited from this video. You can also watch this video about a Christian defending a fake ex-Muslim backfire. And don't forget to subscribe for daily uploads. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum.